Hello again and welcome to our update, this time covering figures for the month of January 2013. Now, Avid viewers may recollect that January 2012 started off very strongly with an 11% year-on-year increase in both the volume and value of inventorism, so it's not a big surprise to us to see a slight 1% dip when we look at January 2013 compared with a year ago. However, continuing the trend we've seen across a number of recent months, how much we are earning from overseas visitors continues to increase at a considerable rate, this month up 11% on a year ago. Some of the key features about January 2013 include that we saw a strong increase in visits from what we call the rest of the world region. Those are places outside of both Europe and North America. North America also delivered a strong increase, and this is really encouraging because the US is by far our most valuable inbound source market. Now, intriguingly, there was also a 4% increase in how much visitors with what we call a miscellaneous journey purpose spent here in Britain during January. And miscellaneous visitors can include those whose primary journey purpose was personal shopping. So maybe that's telling us there was an increase in visitors coming for the January sales this year. Now let's look at what we call our international tourism balance of payments. This is the difference between how much visitors to Britain spend here and how much British people going abroad spend while they're overseas. What we can see is that we have to look right back to the mid-1980s for when this was last in surplus. The deficit increased rapidly during the 1990s, but we can see that since 2008, when at today's prices the deficit stood at about £24 billion, there has been quite a substantial decrease, such that in 2012 it was around about £14 billion. Now let's take a look at visitors from overseas who travel by Eurostar train to and from Britain. In 2011, we saw 2.4 million visits from overseas, and that's about 7 or 8% of the overall market. Now these visitors spent more than 11 million nights here in Britain, and that means that on average, each of those visitors was here for just less than five nights. That's telling us that this is very much a short break market, because that's rather lower than the eight, night, eight nights when we look across all types of visitor. Spending was just below £1 billion in 2011, and that means that on average we were earning about £400 from each Eurostar visitor. Again, that's somewhat lower than the average, which in 2011 was about £580. However, despite that below average spend per visit, when we analyse how much we're earning per night for those travelling by Eurostar, in fact, it's somewhat above average at £87. Let's look at the top markets for Eurostar visitors. No surprises at the top there. We see France and Belgium are the main source markets. But notice just how many long-haul source markets are also in the top ten. Places like South Korea, Brazil, Australia, Canada, telling us that many long-haul visitors combine a trip to Britain with other European destinations. One of the defining characteristics of visitors travelling by Eurostar is that they're much more likely than average to be here on a holiday. We can see that almost 60% of Eurostar visitors are here for a holiday, compared with less than 40% when we're looking across all modes. Despite the fact that it's very much a holiday market, we find that, in fact, it's a market that is delivering visits right across the year. So, yes, a few more visits in the summer months than the winter, but not to an extreme degree. Next month, we will look at provisional figures for February 2013, and we'll also take a look at visitors who travel to Britain by ferry. So, until next time, bye-bye.